Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about some commonly used idioms related to sports. Whether or not you are a sports fan, English in the United States is filled with idioms related to all kinds of sports, but most often baseball and American football. While we use these all over the place in English, we hear them most frequently in the workplace. So we are going to look at each of these idioms from a business perspective. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video for a short quiz testing your knowledge of these idioms. Let's get started. Number one is a low blow or hitting below the belt. This expression comes from boxing, but in everyday life, it means that you give an unfair criticism or you act in an unkind or underhanded way. Let's look at an example of both of these. Bringing up personal issues during a professional discussion is considered a low blow and is generally discouraged. Criticizing a colleague's work ethic during a team meeting is unprofessional and seen as hitting below the belt. An unfair and hurtful low blow. Oh, that was below the belt. Try to keep the gloves up. Number two, the balls in your court or the balls in someone's court. This comes from tennis. If the ball is in your court, it means that it is your turn to hit the ball with your racket. Similarly, if someone says to you, the ball's in your court, it means that they feel they have already taken appropriate action on a situation. So it's now up to you to make the next move. Let's look at an example. We have presented our proposal. Now the ball is in your court to decide whether or not to move forward with the partnership. Okay, so ball's in your court. Number three, to be blindsided. This expression comes from American football or rugby. It means that you are attacked by someone from an unexpected position. You are caught unprepared and you don't see the attack coming. Let's look at an example. We were blindsided by our competitor when they stole one of our biggest clients. The sudden change in company policy blindsided the employees, leaving them surprised and confused. I was as blindsided as poor old Henry down there. Number four, to call the shots. This comes from billiards. To say that someone calls the shots this means that they are in charge. They are the one who makes all of the important decisions. For example, as the CEO, Emily has the authority to call the shot on major decisions affecting the company's strategic direction. I call the shots and I'm sorry if you don't like that. Number five, to cover all your bases. This expression comes from baseball. This means to be prepared for all potential outcomes or scenarios. This is through thorough planning. For example, to ensure project success, the manager made sure to cover all the bases, addressing potential issues before they arose. Well, that's a relief that your bases are covered. Number six, down to the wire. This comes from track and field or races. It means that something happens at the very last moment or just before a deadline. For example, the negotiation went down to the wire with both parties reaching an agreement just minutes before the deadline. Hey guys, it's coming out of the wire. Number seven, drop the ball. This comes from American football or basketball or baseball. Basically any game where dropping the ball is a very serious error. To drop the ball in everyday speech means to make a mistake or fail to do something that was expected. For example, the manager apologized for dropping the ball on the client presentation and promised better preparation next time. Yeah, she really dropped the ball. Number eight. Make a game plan. This comes from any sport where teams devise a strategic plan. To make a game plan means to develop a strategy or a plan to achieve a specific goal. For example, before starting the project, the team gathered to make a game plan, outlining tasks and deadlines. And will I be privy to this game plan, Dan, considering the fact that I started this company? Number nine. 
get on the ball. This comes from any sports where you have a ball. It means to be engaged, proactive, and attentive in a task or responsibility. Let's look at an example. To meet deadlines, it's important for the team to get on the ball and prioritize tasks effectively. Sir, whoever you are, you are in violation of a- Better get on the ball and wise up, Junior, or you're never gonna see that mail again. Number 10, get the ball rolling. Again, this comes from many different sports where a ball is involved. This means to get something started such as a project. For example, let's schedule a meeting to get the ball rolling on the new marketing campaign. Well, I appreciate you getting the ball rolling, Nate. Number 11, to hit it out of the park. Hit it out of the park is related to baseball. This means to achieve a great success or accomplish something exceptionally well. For example, the marketing campaign surpassed all expectations and truly hit it out of the park in terms of success. She wrote an absolutely beautiful editorial urging the administration of the school to consider adopting school uniforms and uh, well she just hit it out of the park. Number 12, home stretch. This comes from horse racing. To be in the home stretch means to be in the final part of a task or project. It means that you're almost done with the project. For example, with only a few tasks left, we're in the home stretch with this project. Be all right, we're on the home stretch on my day. Number 13, in the ballpark or a ballpark figure. This expression comes from baseball as well. When you talk about a ballpark figure, it means that it's an approximate or rough estimate of an amount rather than an exact number. For example, can you provide a ballpark figure for the budget of the upcoming project? Take a guess, ballpark figure. Abs Number 14, jump the gun. This is from track and field or racing. This means that you start something too early or before it's appropriate. For example, after announcing the product launch, the marketing team realized they jumped the gun and needed more product testing. We're all to jump the gun. Yep. Number 15, to learn the ropes. This expression comes from sailing. This means that you learn how to do a particular job. For example, as a new team member, it's essential to learn the ropes of company procedures and protocols. Listen, mate, you're only here to learn the ropes, okay? Number 16, make the cut, or to say someone couldn't cut it. This expression comes from golf, but can also be used in other sports that have an elimination round. To say someone didn't make the cut or couldn't cut it, it means they are unable to meet the required standards or expectations. For example, only the top candidates with the most relevant experience will make the cut for the final interview. Number five, didn't make the cut. Number 17, not up to par. This also comes from golf. Par is the expected number of strokes needed to complete a hole in golf. So to say something is not up to par, it means that it doesn't meet the expected level of quality or performance. For example, the quality of the final report was not up to par and revisions were necessary. You insist that you're feeling better, but still your work these past few days has not been up to par. Number 18 to be off base this comes from baseball to be off base means to be incorrect or mistaken for example his suggestions for cost cutting seemed a bit off base considering the current market trends understand well i think what marcy's saying linda and, and please correct me if i'm wrong Marcy. i don't want to be off base here number 19 on target this comes from archery, essentially any sport where the goal is to hit a bullseye. To say something is on target, it means that it is accurate and aligned with the goal or objective. For example, the new marketing strategy is on target to increase sales by 20% in the next quarter. We are right on target for Q3 and... Number 20, out of left field. This one comes from baseball, as many of these do. If something is out of left field, it means it is surprising and unexpected. For example, the sudden announcement of company layoffs came out of left field, surprising everyone. I know this is completely out of left field, but I can handle my cases from here. Number 21, par for the course. This one also comes from golf. If something is par for the course, it's typical or expected. It's in line with what is usually seen or done. For example, 
Dealing with customer complaints is par for the course in the service industry. I lost my wallet, but that's par for the course, but it's looking good. That's good, good. Number 22, play hardball. Another baseball expression. This means to adopt a tough or aggressive approach. This is often used in negotiations or competitions. For example, in the negotiation, they decided to play hardball and push for more favorable terms for the company. Well, hey, I don't wanna play hardball with you, but I will if I have to. Number 23, to step up to the plate. Again, from baseball, this means to take responsibility or show initiative in facing a challenge or task. For example, when the manager resigned unexpectedly, John had to step up to the plate and take on additional responsibilities. As a friend, can you please step up to the plate and just help me this one thing number 24 to strike out another from baseball this means to fail or to be unsuccessful in an endeavor or an attempt here's an example despite multiple attempts the sales representative felt disappointed after striking out with every potential client i mean i can't even tell you how many job interviews i've struck out on since i graduated school Number 25, to take one for the team. This is from team sports in general. This means to take on a task that is difficult and that really no one else wants to do, but it is for the benefit of the rest of the team. Here's an example. Even though it meant working overtime, Sarah decided to take one for the team and complete the urgent task. No, he realized he had to take one for the team. Number 26, to throw in the towel. This comes from boxing. To throw in the towel means to give up or to abandon a project. Here's an example. After numerous setbacks, the team decided to throw in the towel and abandon the project. I suppose a gentleman might throw in the towel at this point. Number 27, to touch base. This one comes from baseball. This means to connect with someone or to meet briefly with someone in order to discuss something or get updated on a situation. For example, let's touch base next week to discuss the progress of the marketing campaign. Figured I'd touch base real quick since we're both here. Our last one, number 28, throw a curveball. This one comes from baseball. A curveball is a type of pitch that is difficult to predict. So if someone throws a curveball in life, it means that they introduce an unexpected or challenging element into a situation. For example, the unexpected change in our project requirements really threw us a curveball, but we adapted quickly and finished everything by the deadline. But life throws you curveballs, bro. Those are all of the idioms that we're going to look at related to sports. Now let's have a quick quiz to see how many of these idioms you can remember. For each one, the idiom has been removed from the sentence, so it is your job to decide which idiom belongs to each sentence. You will have five seconds to complete each one. Number one, before starting a new job, it's important to and understand how things work in the company. This one is learn the ropes. It's important to learn the ropes when you start a new job. Number two, when facing challenges, it's crucial not to and give up too easily. Persistence often leads to success. This one should say it's crucial not to throw in the towel. Number three, the manager has the authority to and make decisions that impact the entire department. The manager has the authority to call the shots. Number four, providing a rough estimate or a is often necessary when discussing budgets and expenses. This one should say ballpark figure a rough estimate or a ballpark figure. Number five, making mistakes when you're new to a job is, it's a natural part of the learning process. This should say making mistakes is par for the course. It's a natural part of the learning process. Number six, rushing into a decision without all the necessary information can lead to problems. It's essential not to
This should say, it's essential not to jump the gun. Number seven, if you're unsure about a decision, it's a good idea to, with your colleagues, to gather different perspectives. This should say, it's important to touch base with your colleagues. Those are all of our quiz questions today. I know this was a lot of different sports idioms, but this is only a small percentage of the number of sports-related idioms found in the English language. It can be surprising and overwhelming. I encourage you to learn as many as you can, especially if you ever intend to work in the US market, as these expressions are extremely common there. I hope that you have enjoyed today's lesson. Does your first language use any sports-related idioms? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.